It's a great pleasure to welcome to the Cinema Showcase one of the stars of The Adventures of Ford Fairlane, Mr. Robert England, and certainly a star in his own right. Let me ask you first, what appealed to you most about playing the rather, oh, how shall we say, slimy character you play in uh, Ford Sorry. Fairlane? Kinky? <laughs> <laughs> yes, smiley. Well, actually, I had read, uh, unbeknownst to anybody, the uh, source material, which I think was in New York Magazine, The Adventures of Ford Fairlane. And I'm a fan of that, that kind of updated Philip Marlowe, Raymond Chandler right. stuff. I love the big fix with Richard Dreyfuss, you know, and, and all that. And uh, when I got the script, I just, I thought it was a terrific script. And I'd worked with the director, Rennie, before. Right. So I, I trusted Rennie not to let me get hurt, because if you've seen the movie, you know I... Gosh, I've got, I mean, my whole part is one big fight scene or chase scene. I mean, I'm, in, I go, I'm underwater, I'm in sinking boats, I'm on the Capitol Records building rappelling down the side. So I wanted, you know, to, to trust the director. But I had this sort of vision, I because the, the movie takes place in this sort of, or in the world of the sort of seedy underside of the, of the L.A. music industry, rock industry. And I said, gee, you know, it'd be really fun to make this the classic Gunsel. You know, I'm, I'm really Wayne Newton's hitman is who I am, but I want to make him record industry, what can I do, what can I do? So I came up with this idea to make him like a, like a, sort of like an out of work ex roadie of Rod Stewart, you know, with this sort of Euro trash Cockney accent and mm -hmm. uh, Rennie and Joel Silver let me do that, you know, which I really am grateful for because it was fun. It just gave him that little extra dimension that I think kind of fit him into the script. But I, letting me do that was a great, yeah. great gift and it, and it loosened me up, you know, with the part of it. When you can find a hook like that, it, it does really sort of liberate you to, to explore the uh, aspects of well, a hair. From that it. came the black leather because I thought, well, this guy's probably seen too many Billy Idol videos, you know. So it gave me that hook. And then that gave me the Billy Idol connection and the black leather made me let, make him just a bit kinky, you know. Mm -hmm. well, he's just a trifle kinky, <laughs> just a wee bit. He probably likes pain a bit, you know? Go ahead, go ahead, Four, hit me again, you know? <laughs> so I, he's that kind of guy that you hit him and he just keeps bouncing back like one of those round bottom do clown toys, you know, that yeah. <laughs> you can't keep down, Absolutely. stress dolls or whatever they call them. You know, another <laughs> thing that impressed me, uh, and, and from working with him before, um, was Rennie's direction um, of um, his, his use of, of color and light, I think, is tremendously, uh, tremendously impressive. Well, Rennie is European, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I, I think there's a certain amount of a, of a Verhoeven, work, you know, right. to Rennie's work, and I also think there's a bit of a German impressionist, you know, down deep inside of Rennie. But there's also this teenage rock and roll American crazy in Rennie, this action, rhythmic, sort of storyboarded. You know, Rennie's very graphic in his design mm -hmm. too. Um, and I respond to that because I direct as well. But Rennie, boy, you know, Rennie has a very subtle yet very graphic eye that's always at work. And, and after a while, you begin to see yourself in Rennie's composition as an actor. You begin to kind of fit into Rennie's frame, and you know to, to trust him completely. You know, sometimes it's just like half of your face, and you know just to turn into that shot real slow because he's got a deep focus shot going, or he's got steam coming through a window in the background, or he's got the blinking tail light of a car going on back there. And you learn to just like trust Rennie and, and, and be, let Rennie draw you into the frame. Yeah. yeah. I would be remiss, uh, of course, in not mentioning to you uh, Freddy Krueger, so I will. Uh, has the, Mr. Has, Kruger, has the astonishing, <laughs> yes, Mr. Kruger, has the really the astonishing success of this character um, surprised you at all? Well, in, initially, of course. I mean, none of us had any idea. And I just got back from the Cannes Film Festival and a couple of film festivals in Europe, uh, in Milano, in Roma. Uh, I'm saying that now because you have to say the city's right, Milan and Rome. I'm not being af affected, but when you're over there, they don't say Milan, they yes. say Milano. And uh, it's amazing now. It's still ascending over there. I mean, Freddy's this huge phenomenon I'm taking off. And of course, in Europe, you get a lot more respect because they think of the horror movie as this great American art form like the Western. And uh, I'm always surprised by the new take people get on it, you know, and stuff. But recently, my, 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 my theory about the success is that the teenagers always win in the Nightmare on Elm Street right. movies. By the conclusion of every Nightmare movie, Freddy's evil is put back in the box until the next one, and generally by a woman, a strong, young, adolescent female who's sort of beginning her journey into adulthood. She's on the cusp of adulthood, you know, mm -hmm. and confronting all that stuff that's out there in society today. I mean, 
gosh, I don't know what it must be like to be 18 or 19 today. I mean, I'd love to be young and beautiful again, and they're all so young and beautiful, and I'd love to be going to Madonna concerts and going to Rhythm Nation concerts with Janet Jackson, but I'd be so scared about the world because mm -hmm. there's so much going on out there, and it's so scary. And I think for an hour and a half, for six bucks, they sit in the dark, you know, and they yeah. can see a symbol of that that they win, they beat up, they get Freddie at the end. And yeah. Freddie is the symbol of all that's coming down the pike for them in their future, whether it's AIDS or pollution or, 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 or lack of employment or, or racism or, or child abuse or, 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 or alcoholism or any of the things that are out there in society yeah. now. And for them to be able to get the best of that in an hour and a half and sit in the dark and do it on an entertaining fantasy level that's not real, that they can detach from and not identify with on a reality level. Like when you watch the news and you see that, that dead body on the news, that's real. That's not some actor under makeup. And I think kids, that's why the horror movie renaissance has been so great. I think it's, an, it's that kind of escapism for the adolescent to exactly. get away from that kind of in and I remember like when I used to watch the Vietnam War on the 6 o'clock news, how that used to get to me as a young guy in college. And mm -hmm. it used to like depress me for days. I think it's an escape from that, maybe. Well, I think you've certainly created with Freddy Krueger a uh, sort of a modern equivalent of uh, really a, a Frankenstein. And um, with your new, the, probably was the boogeyman for the '80s, yeah. and maybe we'll put him to bed now in the '90s. And with your new movie, uh, Ford Fairlane, uh, another memorable character. Robert, thank you so much for taking this time out. Thank you. And now, now I get to die. You're breaking me heart. What's the point? The point is, I want to go out man to man. Just me and you. Put down the gun. Let's go with it. What, are you afraid of me? Come on, man or the man Fist the cuss, baby. Let's go with it. Just you and me. No one's around. All right. Anyway, you want it. <laughs> you crack me up, you know that? What kind of idiot throws his gun down? I mean, use your head. I mean, is there something wrong with you or what? I mean, who's there? look, look what you did. <laughs> Thanks for work. Thanks for being a jerk. I mean, man to man, mano to mano. How does man or the man on me? <laughs>